a groundbreaking discovery, NASA's Voyager spacecraft has crossed the boundaries of the solar system to discover a startling and mysterious phenomenon. A fiery, high-temperature wall beyond the outer reaches of our cosmic neighborhood. Described as a wall of fire, the phenomenon was detected in a boundary region known as the heliopause, marking the transition from the solar-dominated region to interstellar space. Back in 1977, in an era when computing power was minuscule by today's standards and space technology was just taking its first confident steps beyond Earth, NASA sent two modest-looking probes, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, on a long, almost unthinkable journey. Their mission was originally to explore the giant outer planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. But their true goal lay much further to reach the very edge of the solar system and break through into the unknown interstellar void. After decades of hard flying, powered by tiny radioisotope thermoelectric generators and guided by commands from Earth that broke the light barrier, these veteran spacecraft made a revolutionary discovery. They had encountered a surprising and unexpected obstacle, a gigantic, invisible to the eye, but fiery in nature, wall of extremely high temperatures. This boundary, known as the heliopause, is much more complex and dynamic than just a line on a map of space. It marks a dramatic collision front between two powerful forces. On one side is the ever-blowy solar wind, a stream of charged particles, mostly protons and electrons, flowing out of the sun in all directions at speeds of hundreds of kilometers per second. This wind forms a huge protective bubble around our solar system, called the heliosphere. Think of a bubble in a river, but on a cosmic scale. The solar wind is blowing the bubble out, pushing aside the surrounding interstellar medium, the thin gas, dust, and cosmic rays that fill the space between the stars and our galaxy. The heliosphere extends incredibly far, with its nose in the direction the sun moves through the galaxy, about three times the orbit of Pluto, and its tail stretching even farther, the heliopause is the critical surface where the pressure of the rapidly weakening solar wind finally equalizes with the pressure of the oncoming interstellar medium. This is not a static wall, but a turbulent transition zone where intense interaction occurs. It was here, at this boundary, that the Voyagers made their sensational discovery. Instruments such as the plasma detector and the cosmic ray sensor recorded a change in the direction of particles, the composition of the medium, and a colossal jump in temperature. The readings jumped to staggering values, up to 50,000 degrees Celsius. This phenomenon was metaphorically called the firewall, or plasma wall. A natural question arises. How can such extreme temperatures exist in the vacuum of space? And why didn't the probes made of metal and electronics melt instantly? The key lies in understanding the very nature of temperature in space. Temperature here is primarily a measure of the average kinetic energy, speed of movement, of particles, and not heat in the usual sense as from a fire or heater. Particles in the heliopause region have enormous speed but they are also incredibly rarefied. The density of matter there is trillions of times less than in the Earth's atmosphere at the surface. Therefore, despite the phenomenally high temperature, i.e. speed, of individual particles, the total amount of thermal energy that they can transfer to the body of the spacecraft during the rarest collisions is extremely small. It is like being hit by rare drops of water flying at high speed. You will feel the impact but you will not be boiled in terrible agony. The Voyagers were designed to withstand the extreme conditions of space, including vacuum and temperature changes, and the rarefaction of the heliopause saved them from instantaneous destruction. This temperature jump is a direct consequence of the formation of a so-called shock wave. When the supersonic solar wind collides with the interstellar medium, it is suddenly decelerated much like the air in front of a supersonic aircraft creates a shock wave. In doing so, the kinetic energy of the wind is converted into thermal energy of the particles, heating them up to tens of thousands of degrees. This complex interaction creates a zone of intense turbulence 
and high-energy particles, but the Voyager's discoveries did not end there. As they crossed the heliopause, they carried not only particle detectors, but also ultra-sensitive magnetometers. And here, the researchers were in for another surprise. It was expected that when passing from the heliosphere to the interstellar medium, the orientation of the magnetic field would change dramatically, since the Sun's field would give way to the galactic magnetic field. However, the data, first from Voyager 1 and then from Voyager 2, showed something different. It turned out that the magnetic field just beyond the heliopause maintains a direction very close to the direction of the magnetic field inside the heliosphere. This was an unexpected alignment. Initially, there was uncertainty with the data from one probe. Was this a local anomaly or a general pattern? But identical measurements from Voyager 2, which crossed the heliopause at a completely different point in space, confirmed this surprising fact. The magnetic field of the interstellar medium near the heliopause turned out to be aligned with the solar magnetic field. This discovery required a revision of theories about the structure of magnetic fields at the edge of the solar system, and their interactions, pointing to a more complex and possibly large-scale organization of the interstellar magnetic field in our local galactic environment. The significance of the Voyager mission goes far beyond simply establishing the existence of the heliopause and measuring its parameters. They provided the only direct measurements of conditions in this remote and difficult-to-reach region. Every bit of data transmitted from a distance, where radio signals take more than 20 hours to reach Earth, is priceless. These data have radically changed our understanding of the structure and dynamics of the heliosphere, our spider-like cosmic cocoon. The heliosphere plays a vital role as a shield that largely deflects galactic cosmic rays, ultra-high-genery particles that can be dangerous to both space technology and potentially life. Studying how this shield interacts with the interstellar medium, how it is formed and where exactly its boundary lies, is of great importance for astrophysics and heliophysics. As it turns out, the amazing wall of fire is a vivid testimony to the powerful processes occurring at the boundary of two cosmic environments. It shows how the sun's energy is transformed and dissipated at the very edge of its influence and the unexpected alignment of magnetic fields opens a new chapter in the study of the magnetic structure of the local interstellar space surrounding our solar system. The Voyager mission almost half a century after their launch, these tiny messengers from Earth continue to work, transmitting unique data from interstellar space where no other human-made object has yet dared to penetrate. The discovery of the firewall and magnetic surprises at the heliopause is not an end point, but a powerful impetus for future research, such as NASA's AMAP mission, which will specifically study these boundary processes from close range, building on the legacy of the Voyagers. In fact, the IMAP mission is one of the most exciting and ambitious NASA projects scheduled to launch in the coming years. Although the device will be much closer to Earth than the Voyager probes, its goal is directly related to understanding how our solar system interacts with the rest of space. This mission will observe the boundary of the heliosphere, the region where the solar wind collides with interstellar matter. This is where outer space, in the true sense of the word, begins. IMAP will operate at the L1 Lagrange point, about a million and a half kilometers from Earth, in a direct line between our planet and the Sun. This allows it to continuously observe the solar wind and other particle flows without interference from Earth's magnetic field. Unlike the Voyagers, which moved in a straight line away from the Sun, IMAP will observe from a fixed position, collecting data using a sophisticated array of sensors and spectrometers. The mission's main objective is to create a detailed map of the interaction of the solar wind with the interstellar medium. To do this, the device will measure the flow of energetically charged particles, so-called energetically neutral atoms. These atoms are born in the boundary zone between the solar and interstellar medium and carry information about how the boundary of the heliosphere is formed and chained. In essence, IMAP will be something like a cosmic X-ray 
creating a three-dimensional model of the protective bubble surrounding the solar system. In addition, the mission will help to understand how particles accelerate in space. This is important not only for fundamental science, but also for the practical safety of future manned missions. We hope they will happen. After all, high-energy particles of cosmic origin can be deadly for astronauts and equipment, despite its relatively close proximity. IMAP will operate in high radiation and variable space climate. That's why the craft is already equipped with powerful electronics, with radiation protection and a passive thermal control system. It won't experience extreme temperatures like 50,000 DC, like in the sun's corona, but it still needs to withstand the differences between the hot sunny side and the cold shadow. IMAP is thus the successor to the Voyagers. It will listen to the edge of our solar system, collect data that was previously only indirectly available, and give humanity a map of the frontier beyond which real space begins. The mission combines advanced technology, fundamental science, and strategic importance for the future exploration of the distant frontiers of the solar system. In the meantime, with every signal that the deep space network antennas receive from the retreating voyagers, humanity gets a chance to look into a distant and unexplored part of space. These envoys of the 1970S, having traveled billions of kilometers, continue to bring knowledge that changes ideas about our place in space.